where we want to start with is the ABCs, uh, the ABCs of, uh, of Tesla and owning a Tesla. So our ABCs are basically comprised of autopilot, basic operation, and charging. And so those are going to be uh, the areas that we're going to start with. So in reference to uh, basic operation, um, this is just to kind of make sure that uh, some of the some of the overall stuff is covered um, in as far as your touchscreen, uh, getting started with the car, unlocking, getting into the car, getting your keys set up, and so forth. Um, so some of us may seem that as very basic, but for a lot of new owners, that's completely different from what they're used to. So it's very important that we have that basic operation understanding. Now there is an owner's manual, um, obviously not like traditional vehicles that is not found in your glove box. It's not a giant, you know, uh, a book that you have to carry around. Um, it is available online uh, and you can access it from your center console and reference that owner's manual at any time. Welcome to your Tesla. Congratulations. You now drive one of the safest, most advanced and most fun cars on the planet. Thank you for your part in accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. Sure, your Tesla is an ever-improving supercomputer on wheels, but it's really easy to use. First, you should know that there's an on-screen owner's manual that contains everything there is to know about your car and how to use it. If you ever have a question or want to learn something new, simply pull up the owner's manual on the touchscreen. Tap the Tesla T centered at the very top of the screen. This brings up information about your car. Tap the words owner's manual within this window and then navigate to a topic. To close this or any other window, tap the X in the upper corner or simply tap outside of the window. Tesla owner's manuals are available online too, so you can check them out anytime. Just search for them. And I did want to call out one thing on the owner's manual um, is as you're looking at it uh, from the touch screen in your car, now, it is organized and broken out into topics, which make it easy to find. But also, if you have something that you're just wondering, like a keyword, there's a search button at the very top of there um, that you can click on, type in, and it'll help you search the PDF for what you're looking for. So let's dive into the uh, physical controls now. The steering wheel controls can do much more than adjusting your driving position. Spin the left scroll wheel to adjust the volume of media for a phone call. Press this control in to pause, play, mute, or unmute audio. Push it right or left to skip between tracks or radio stations. The right scroll wheel is primarily for cruise control. We'll cover that in more detail soon. Pressing in this control initiates a voice command. You can ask your car to do just about anything, and it's constantly learning new commands. Press, release, and then say a command once you hear a chime. Navigate to Tesla headquarters. Show the backup camera. You can also tap here on the touchscreen for voice commands. Play Rocket Man by Elton John. Uncommon issues that would require a service visit in a traditional vehicle can be resolved in a matter of seconds using a trick in your Tesla. Press in and hold both steering wheel controls until the touchscreen turns black. Then, lift off the controls and wait a few seconds for the screen to reset. Your turn signal stock is right where you'd expect it. Press it up or down gently for three flashes. Press it all the way up or down to fully engage your turn signal. Unlike most other cars, the stock will return to its central position while your signal is on. A sufficient change in steering angle will turn off the signal like in any other car. To disengage it manually, gently press the stock in either direction. Pull the turn signal stock towards you to flash your high beam headlights. Push it away from you to turn on your high beams. With auto high beams activated from the touchscreen, your car will do its best to automatically dim the brights when oncoming traffic is detected. You can also set your windshield wipers to operate automatically when rain is detected. Your car really works to make your driving as easy as possible. To manually initiate a single windshield wipe, lightly press the button on the end of the turn signal stock. This also brings up the windshield wiper controls on the touchscreen, so you can select between intermittent low and high, continuous slow, 
and fast and automatic. Pressing in the wiper button all the way will wash the windshield. Use the right stock on the steering column to select between drive modes. With your foot on the brake pedal, press firmly up for reverse, firmly down for drive, and lightly in either direction for neutral. Press in the button on the end of the stock to put your Tesla in park. The parking brake is automatically applied whenever your car is in park, so there's no extra step when you're somewhere steep. Also, once your car is in park, you can get out. There's no engine to turn off. Your Tesla powers off automatically when you get out and close the doors. One last notable physical control is above you. Press here for your hazard lights. Just about everything else can be operated using your voice or the touchscreen, which we'll cover next. Awesome. So as you can see, and if, for those of you guys who have your vehicles, you see that there are clearly not as many controls, buttons, knobs as your normal car. But as you can see from that video, pretty much everything is covered uh, that you're looking for. Um, some of the things are in the touchscreen, in the menus. Um, like one example I wanted to bring up was the glove box. There's no dedicated button to open the glove box. It's actually on the touchscreen, but also alluding to with the power of voice controls, you can say, open my glove box and it will open the glove box. So a lot of the things have been made very uh, efficient by enabling voice commands that are just continuously growing and expanding. Expanding. Um, we do have, I believe, a reference, um, and I can point to that after, of a user community generated uh, voice controls list that shows a lot of voice controls that you can leverage, um, or you can just have fun and try different things and see what things will uh, result. Uh, the other one that I did want to point out to you uh, was the, the scroll wheel reboot, which is both left and right scroll wheels, holding them down does cause your car to do a soft reboot. This can be done while driving as well, but obviously you're not going to see anything on the display, but you have full driving capabilities. And this may need to be done in case you see any weird glitches or anything happening that's not normal. Sometimes a little soft reboot fixes the problem. Uh, you'll see all the controls here that are listed. Feel free to take a screenshot of this um, for your uh, reference. Um, and of course, um, another thing that I did want to highlight is there is an internal camera. Several people have asked about this. It is item number seven. It's located right above the uh, rear view mirror. Today, that camera is not being used, um, but uh, it there's some uh, some purpose to be used in the future for autonomy autonomy um, and, uh, and and robo taxing. So we'll see what it does in the future, but today you don't have to worry about that being used or, or seeing anything. Uh, one more thing about uh, opening and closing the doors. Um, you'll notice that the doors, you've got your standard window controls and then you've got a door button. Uh, it's actually item number one on this uh, sheet here. Um, and that's your that's to open and close any and all four of the doors. However, the front driver and passenger door have an emergency lever. It's actually item number 12 on the on this sheet. The key thing to remember here is these are only located on the driver and passenger side doors. This is meant to be pulled in case of emergency of power loss. This overrides the electric electronics in the car and allows you to open the door. However, it's not recommended to use this when you're not in a state of emergency. The reason why is it does drop the glass, enables you to open the door, uh, and you kind of don't want to be doing that if it doesn't need to be done. It could cause some misalignment with the glass. Uh, so just a, a good, helpful tip to keep in mind uh, as you guys use your vehicles. The touchscreen works much like a smartphone. It displays and controls just about everything in your Tesla. The third of the screen closest to you presents the information that's most important while driving. Drive mode, current speed, and state of charge show at the top. Below is your driving visualization. This animates your Tesla's perception of its surroundings and gives readouts for active safety features like blind spot monitoring. Driver assistance features like auto steer are also indicated here. When your Tesla is in park, you can tap to open your trunks or charge port. Tap these icons to display the backup camera or charging menu or to initiate a voice command from the screen. Tap here to view your windshield wiper controls. As a reminder, your windshield wiper controls also appear anytime you use the wipe button. Swipe left or right to toggle between what we call cards, which contain additional features and information. Up here is your status bar. 
Most of these icons are interactive. Tap the Bluetooth icon to connect your phone for calls and media. Bring up the Bluetooth menu on your phone, and then on the Cars screen, select Add New Device and Start Search. Once your phone's name appears, select it and wait for a prompt on your phone. Select Pair within the prompt, and you're connected. This fully interactive map serves as the backdrop for most of the screen. Explore by dragging, pinching, and rotating, just as you would on a smartphone. Tap to select a point of interest, or press and hold to drop a pin. These red pins are Tesla's supercharger stations, where you'll be charging on long-distance trips. You can always pull up these and other nearby charging locations by tapping here. Enter a destination here, or use voice commands. Navigate to SpaceX. If you need to charge to reach your destination, Tesla Trip Planner will automatically route you to superchargers along the way. Access more apps from the bar at the bottom of the screen. This is your app launcher, which contains most of them. The Media app is one touch away and can be moved so it displays below the map. You also adjust your climate from here. Just tap for front and rear defrosters, heated seats, or to turn on climate control and reveal the climate menu. Tap or slide to adjust temperature, or just tell your Tesla what setting you want. Set the temperature to 70. Press and hold here to turn climate control off, or again, just tell your car what you want. The climate menu houses many more controls. It's even where you position the airflow. Simply move it where you like right from the screen. This is pretty fun, so we're sorry to tell you that you'll probably only ever adjust it once. Your preferred airflow position saves to your driver profile, so even it's set exactly how you like it every time you're behind the wheel. Finally, tap here to bring up the controls menu, where you can view and toggle numerous settings. You even open your glove compartment from here. One important point to note in the driving tab, regenerative braking. As you lift off the accelerator pedal, your Tesla will slow down while recapturing energy and returning it to the battery pack. You can see on the driving visualization that your brake lights turn on when regen causes significant deceleration. It maximizes efficiency and control, ultimately making it easier to drive. Yeah, the touchscreen obviously is your main, uh, the, the main thing on your vehicle, right? It controls majority of your vehicles all from the touchscreen. And I think breaking it out into these uh, different sections makes it really easy to understand where things are and where you should be looking for things. Uh, that video pretty much covered majority of the touchscreen and what you need to know. I think what's really uh, interesting is if you're in a multi uh, a driver household where different people are going to be using your car are the driver profiles. Majority of the settings that you set from air to your, not just your seat position and your steering wheel positions, but even your driving styles. Like for those of you that want to maximize efficiency and have regen on, those of you that don't want to have regen on and want more of kind of that traditional braking like a normal car um, and, and and so forth. All of that will save to your profile. And that's kind of handy. All that stuff is remembered and it goes further than just your seat and your steering wheel. Um, some other things to uh, kind of keep uh, aware of on here are the, the maps. Um, you'll notice that on there you've got home and work. You can add more addresses to your maps as if, you know, your relative's house or other family or friends houses, you can save them on there by long pressing on the screen. They did show how to drop a pin, but from that dropping a pin, there is a star that's right there and you can click on that star and it'll add it to a favorites list that'll show up on your drop down under navigate. Um, I think from that, that's most of the stuff from the touchscreen, uh, all of the controls that you have on there. Um, but remember it as this layout, you've got your, your driving controls, you've got your status, you've got your map, you've got your cards, and then you've got your bottom navigation. Uh, that'll really help you kind of understand where things are at. If you've already found your way in, well done. The easiest way to open the door is to reach with your outer hand, press here with your thumb, and pull the handle. When you want to get out, press this button with your thumb. Tap here at the top of the touchscreen to create your driver profile so you can get comfortable and save your settings. Reach down to the side of your seat to adjust the seat bottom, seat back, and lumbar support. 
To adjust the position of the steering wheel, go back to the touchscreen. Use the left steering wheel control to adjust your steering column up, down, in, or out. Select mirrors on the touchscreen, and then use the same left steering wheel control to adjust each side mirror. Select save once everything is set. Your rear view mirror adjusts manually, like in any other car. It's a convenient opportunity to take a peek at how great you look in that driver's seat. You can readjust your steering wheel and mirrors at any time by selecting controls and then quick controls on the touchscreen, or by using voice commands. Adjust my steering wheel. These and many other settings save to your driver profile, so your Tesla will always be just how you like it, even if you're not the only driver. You can link your profile to your phone key and your car will automatically adjust to you as you open the door. Um, so under vehicle operation, there are three main sections here uh, with uh, driving, climate control, and opening your doors. Um, so driving, there's a lot of key uh, elements here with driving, as opposed to your traditional ICE vehicle where uh, you usually had a key or a key fob. Um, you've got, with the Tesla, you getting into the vehicle essentially activates that vehicle. The vehicle is on. You leaving the vehicle and walking away turns the vehicle off. Um, the one pedal driving. So there are several things in the driving element that need to be understood um, and learned about that's different on a Tesla from other vehicles that you may be used to. Um, and then with the climate control, uh, same sort of thing, right? It's a different sort of climate uh, control in, in the vehicle and, and especially the Tesla 3s and Ys are this new blade-like you know, central uh, console where you saw on the touchscreen, you were able to move it and adjust it and have it flow around you up, down, left, right. So understanding how to adjust that um, is, is really important there. Um, with the air streams. Now, with the airflow on the threes and whys, the rear seats are a little bit more traditional. They have the normal vents. Um, and then we talked about opening doors uh, just a little while ago about how they are, um, their emergency handles for the front two doors, um, but typically it's the, it's the touch button that's located uh, on the door handle. And now we're gonna go into uh, keys, uh, which is uh, pretty fun because I found out for me, uh, the Tesla was my first car that did not require a key or a key fob, um, should you choose. Your phone is your Tesla's key. We call it phone key, clever name, huh? Phone key wirelessly communicates with your car over Bluetooth. So even when you're somewhere without cellular connectivity, your phone will function as the key. Open the Tesla app, Sign in with your Tesla account credentials, and you can see your car and any other Tesla products that you have. To set up Phone Key, you need to use one of your backup key cards. So let's cover them first. These backup key cards are here in case your phone dies or you need to hand your Tesla to a valet. You should always keep one with you wherever you keep your driver's license. To unlock your Tesla using the key card, press it against the driver's side door pillar below the camera like this. Do the same to lock the car. To power on your Tesla so you can drive it using the backup key card, place it here behind the front row cup holders and press the brake. These icons flash and park, reverse, neutral, and drive appear, indicating that your Tesla is ready to drive. You can now move the key card and shift to drive or reverse. While you'll rarely use the backup key card, you do need it to set up phone key. Here's how. Make sure that your phone's Bluetooth is on and open the Tesla app. Select phone key and follow the prompts. The app will have you tap the key card against the door pillar or behind the cup holders to complete the setup process. Once your phone is activated as a phone key, if you approach your locked Tesla with the phone key on you, pulling a door handle instantly unlocks the car. Simply sit in the driver's seat with your phone in the car, buckle up, press the brake pedal, and you're ready to shift to drive or reverse. We recommend activating walk-away door lock. With this setting on, you can take entire trips without reaching for your phone. When you walk away with your phone, your Tesla will automatically lock. With walk-away door lock off, tap the lock button within the app to lock your Tesla. You can also use phone key to control the trunks and charge port over Bluetooth. This is in addition to the span of other Tesla app controls that use the internet connections of your phone and your car. 
quick note on the front trunk. The hood is made of aluminum, so it's much lighter than those of traditional cars. To close it, set it down gently and then lean into it with your palms on each side of the Tesla T. Like this. It will click shut. Phone key works as long as the car you're using is the most recent product to be pulled up in the Tesla app. If you've most recently selected a different Tesla product, you'll need to select the car you want to use before phone key will work with that car. As long as the correct car is selected, there's no need to have the app open or your phone unlocked. Your phone just needs to be powered on with Bluetooth active. Speaking of Bluetooth, there's a separate Bluetooth pairing process to connect your phone to the car for calls and media. We'll cover that soon. You can manage phone keys and backup key cards on the touchscreen by selecting controls and then locks. So regarding the phone key, um, I cannot stress enough how amazing and convenient this is um, and how important it is to set up with your phone, um, but also highlighting that the key card is still your backup. Always hold on to the key card um, just in case. I've run into instances where my phone has died. And if your phone is off or it's died, it's not going to be able to open your car, in which case you'll need your key card. Um, now, the nice thing about uh, having a phone a key or even just having the app available is that if you've got a family member that's logged into the same app, they can help you get your car unlocked so that you can get back inside the vehicle from wherever they are because the app accesses the car from anywhere that you have an internet connection. So uh, the whole concept of a phone key and having an app that connects to your car is just truly you know, revolutionary and amazing and very, very convenient. Now, you can get a traditional key fob that's also available uh, for your vehicle and that you'll see it up on the screen here that does allow you to uh, quickly and easily open and close uh, your frunk, your trunk, um, as well as unlock your doors and so forth. So um, that is also an option that you can uh, get for your vehicle. Um, so I briefly touched on, on the Tesla app just in the last slide, but the Tesla app is essentially an app that runs on either iOS or Android that allows you almost full access to your vehicle anywhere that you have an internet connection. So that's very, very handy. Anything from turning your air on to uh, opening and closing, uh, unlocking your doors, opening your frunk, opening your trunk, um, to initiate charging, uh, to summon your vehicle if you have purchased a full self-driving, uh, to even look up where your closest superchargers are and then sending that navigation to your vehicle and being able to get there. So really, really handy having that in the palm of your hand. And you could just imagine that, you know, from if you were to be stuck somewhere, being able to unlock or I used it if I had it outside and I had my delivery driver during this pandemic put the package inside the car better than leaving it on my doorstep. So there's all kinds of fun, cool tricks and tips that you can use this stuff for, but all in all, having the Tesla app is extremely uh, efficient and, and helpful. All right, autopilot. Now this is what the Tesla is known for, right? Those of you who have heard of it, um, they know that Tesla is known for its autopilot technology. And so we're going to talk uh, a little bit about autopilot here so that you guys get an understanding of what it is and what it can do and what its capabilities are. For many Tesla drivers, Autopilot is the very best part of Tesla ownership. With Autopilot in use, driving is more enjoyable and you arrive at your destination more relaxed. And as with so many aspects of your Tesla, over-the-air software updates ensure that Autopilot gets even better and more capable over time. Autopilot consists of active safety and driver assistance features that make your car safer and more convenient to drive. We at Tesla are excited about the full self-driving future. Today, you must be fully attentive and have your hands on the wheel at all times while driving, regardless of what features are active. Let's walk through Autopilot's key features so you can give them a try. Safety is our number one priority in everything we do at Tesla. Not only is your car remarkably effective at keeping you and your passengers safe in the event of a collision, it also has active safety features that help you avoid collisions in the first place. You can review and toggle these features from the Autopilot menu by selecting Controls and then Autopilot. Available driver assistance features vary depending upon the car's configuration. Be sure to look for them on the Autopilot menu so you know how your Tesla is equipped and so you can enable the features you'd like to use.
If you learn about a feature from these videos that isn't on your Tesla, we might be able to add it via an over-the-air software update. Check the Tesla app to explore upgrades. It's easiest to think of Autopilot's driver assistance features as advanced versions of cruise control. Like when using traditional cruise control, you are always in charge of what your car is doing, and you need to be ready to take action at any moment. The features make your driving easier and more relaxing. We'll cover driver assistance features from simplest to most complex. Traffic Aware Cruise Control, or TAC for short, adjusts speed based upon the vehicle ahead of you. When TAC is available, a gray circle with a number in it appears here. That number is your set speed, the fastest your Tesla will travel when TAC is engaged. You can adjust set speed preferences and others from the Autopilot menu. Activating TAC is very simple. You don't need to enter a cruise mode like in other cars. When TAC shows as available, simply press the drive stock firmly down once, like you're shifting to drive again. The gray circle turns blue, indicating that TAC is active, so you can release the accelerator pedal. Your Tesla will travel at the set speed when the road is open, and will slow down as necessary for curves and traffic in your lane ahead. TAC responds to most objects, but can't recognize everything, so be ready to take over as needed. TAC does not attempt to slow for traffic lights, stop signs, or other traffic controls, unless your car is equipped with traffic light and stop sign control and has this feature enabled. To change your set speed while driving, simply spin the right scroll wheel on the steering wheel, up or down. Push the scroll wheel right or left to adjust your following distance. To deactivate TAC, push the drive stock up or gently press the brake pedal. Auto Steer builds upon Traffic Aware Cruise Control by adding steering assistance. A gray steering wheel icon appears here when Auto Steer is available. Press the drive stock down twice in quick succession to activate Auto Steer. The steering wheel icon and the lane lines in the driving visualization turn blue. If TAC isn't already active, it will be engaged as well. TAC is always on when Auto Steer is on. As its name suggests, Auto steer automatically moves the steering wheel to keep you centered in your lane. It does the work of constantly adjusting steering for you, so you can just lightly hold the wheel and scan your surroundings so you're ready in case you need to take over. You should know that auto steer spoils you. You don't realize how much effort you've been putting into keeping a car in its lane until you drive with auto steer for a few days. You'll never want to travel long distance or deal with traffic in another car again. Sorry about that. If your Tesla doesn't detect your hands on the steering wheel while using auto steer, it will prompt you to apply more force to the wheel. It's measuring a small amount of turning force or resistance from your hands, so light turning force will clear this prompt. If you repeatedly ignore these warnings, you're using auto steer unsafely and you will be locked out from using it for the rest of your trip. A larger amount of turning force will deactivate auto steer while leaving traffic aware cruise control on. To deactivate both auto steer and TAC, push the drive stock up or gently press the brake pedal. If your Tesla is equipped with auto lane change, a press of the turn signal while auto steer is on initiates an automatic lane change. Check your mirrors and blind spot as you would normally. Press the turn signal stock lightly when there's space. And with your supervision, your Tesla will automatically move one lane over and continue to steer in the new lane. The hardware on new cars needs to calibrate before features like TAC and Auto Steer will be available. This one-time self-calibration usually completes within a couple hours of driving on well-marked roads. The gray icons won't appear until the required calibration has completed. Auto Steer also needs to be enabled from the Autopilot menu. As a reminder, more details about active safety and driver assistance features can be found in the on-screen owner's manual. All right, autopilot. So I can't stress enough uh, everything that was said in that video, how important and how also we must be responsible when using autopilot. So autopilot is achieved uh, with eight cameras that are around the vehicle, three up front, uh, two on either sides, uh, and then one in the back, and then as well as uh, 12 uh, sensors, uh, six on the front bumper and then six on the rear bumper. Uh, so this gives the vehicle full, um, uh, gives it full visibility around it and aware of its surroundings. Um, and it, it truly is, you know, the ability to, uh, to just 
place it and, and go um, allows you to be a lot more relaxed, enjoying looking around and enjoying your surroundings, while at the same time still keeping your hand on the steering wheel, making sure you're aware of what's going on around you. Um, but it really offers that, and it's great because it comes now on every vehicle, right? Basic autopilot. And then, of course, there's a lot more um, that can be added and gotten with full self-driving, um, which uh, can come on there. So hopefully that gives you a lot better understanding on how autopilot is. You know, I, I think the the comparison to a um, a cruise control on steroids is uh, is is granted. So um, yeah, be use it, use it with safety, but don't be afraid to use it. It, it truly is what sets Tesla apart. All right, so again, just kind of summarizing uh, autopilot, right? You've got the traffic aware cruise control and you've got the auto steer, right? Those are the two uh, big features of autopilot and what they do. Okay, so just going through again, you know, the video kind of covered it, but um, I think it's always uh, a little nerve wracking uh, understanding that if you're driving to press the uh, gear stock, uh, you know, if you were driving a traditional ICE vehicle, you would never touch the gear stock while driving. Um, but the Tesla is smart. It's got a lot of technology built into it. It will not screech your car to a halt on the freeway uh, if you engage the gear stock while driving. So uh, remember to turn on the traffic aware cruise control is just a single press down and then to enable the, the auto steer, it's two press downs on the gear stock. All right, and then the next stage after autopilot is of course full self-driving. This essentially unlocks everything that's available today as well as everything that's going to be available in the future. So today what that is, is navigate on autopilot. That enables you to uh, change lanes into the exit lane and actually take the on and off ramp. Um, and then there is also the uh, uh, smart summon feature, which uh, a lot of people will use to get out of a tight spot. Let's say you can't even open your door to, you can actually summon your car forward to get into. I actually park very close to the side wall of my garage. So I summon the car out because I can't get into the driver's seat. Um, just a very uh, cool feature to be able to have to pull in and out of your garage or in and out of tar uh, tight parking spaces. Those are the features of full self-driving. There are, of course, more to come. Um, you know, as Tesla unlocks more of that, they'll be all included in full self-driving. And so you'll get that going forward. All right. So let's go into charging. Obviously, one of the uh, other most important things for your vehicle, it's how what gets this vehicle running is charging. So let's go into charging. This is your charging kit. Inside, you'll find your mobile connector, which allows you to charge your Tesla anywhere there's a power outlet. A standard 110 volt outlet charges your giant battery relatively slowly, so we don't recommend it as a primary charging solution. But it's nice to keep the connector in your car. You can also purchase adapters from Tesla that allow you to use your mobile connector with outlets that deliver more power. To charge with the mobile connector, first plug it into the outlet and then into your Tesla. A Tesla wall connector is the best home charging option. If you can, just top off every night at home. It takes two seconds to plug in, and your car likes to charge as often as is convenient. Here's how to plug in. Point the connector at your car and press here to open the charge port. You can also open it from the touchscreen, phone key, or by pressing on the charge port itself. The Tesla T illuminates in white, indicating that your car is ready to charge. Firmly plug the connector into the charge port, and the T will first turn blue to show that the car is preparing to charge, and then to a green pulse to indicate that it's charging. The green T pulses slower as charging approaches completion, and turns to a solid green when charging is done. To unplug, press and hold the connector button, and the T will turn blue and then white. Once it's white, simply pull out the connector and then release the button. Your charge port will close automatically. If the T is ever amber, this means that the connector couldn't be latched and likely isn't plugged in all the way. Unplugging and plugging back in more firmly usually clears this. A red T indicates that there's likely a fault with the charge source. Check your touchscreen for a fault message. Our incredibly fast supercharger stations have their own connectors that operate the same way. Supercharging costs more than local home charging, but always far less than the cost of gas. Supercharger sessions automatically bill to the credit card that you have on file. Say goodbye to the grimy gas station swipe. 
Tesla's expansive and rapidly growing international charging networks ensure that you can travel anywhere you like with ease today. We're happy that EV charging locations from other companies are also quickly spreading. There's an additional adapter in your charging kit that allows you to plug in at many of these locations, as well as at public and workplace EV charging stations. First, attach the adapter to the charging station's connector. Then, plug into your Tesla normally. When it's time to unplug, press and hold the button on the station's connector and grip the adapter with your other hand. Once the T turns white, remove the connector and adapter together. Then, be sure to take your adapter with you. You can use the charging menu on the touchscreen to schedule charging to take advantage of low-cost electricity and to set a charge limit. It's best to set a charge limit within daily for everyday driving. Simply adjust to within trip from your car or your phone the night before taking a road trip. Awesome. So yes, definitely some really key important uh, points there on charging. Um, all of you guys, getting your vehicle, you're able to charge right out of the box, right? You can take it and plug it into your basic wall outlet. But as we kind of heard there, it's not the most recommended charging because it is very slow. Uh, some of you that may have a, a shorter distance and you're just using the top off, it can definitely get by. It is recommended to, to get a, um, you know, a higher amp charger at home to be able to use that. And then of course, the benefit of the supercharging network to be able to uh, drive anywhere. A couple of things I just wanted to point out in that video that not a lot of people uh, catch on to or remember. But yes, on all of Tesla's chargers, whether it be a home charger or a supercharger, the little dot on the end of the plug, if you push that, it will open your charge port door. So just a nice little uh, feature to do there. And always making sure that your credit card information that's on file is up to date. But it's very nice and convenient that you don't have to worry about the, the billing portion. You come in, you plug, you charge, and you go away. Uh, if for some reason that it, it cannot be updated, Tesla will send you a message to update your billing information. And then I do know that, you know, uh, here in, in California, of course, if there are, you know, EV plans, um, EV electric plans that offer, you know, lower charging um, depending on time of day. So that comes in really handy using the uh, scheduled departure um, and scheduled charging to be able to set when you want to charge. Um, there's a lot of talk on, on charging and what is uh, healthy charging and what's the proper way to charge. I think this video stated it best. It's very easy on your phone to see what is recommended for daily and what is recommended for trip. Uh, the biggest recommendation is, is don't be charging to 100% every single day. Um, less than 100% is what you will charge every day. As for me, myself, I do it to 90%. And when I take a road trip, I charge to 100% and leave when fully charged. So that's really handy. And the scheduled departure helps with that immensely. If you know you're leaving at 9 a.m., it will make sure that you're hitting that 100% right at 9 a.m. so you can unplug and go. So here was the charging at home that we just uh, talked about and, and covered. So we've got all of that. And then, of course, the charge port lights, knowing what they mean. Uh, mainly, you're looking for that green, the blinking green. When you're blinking green, you're juicing up and your Tesla is happy. And then, of course, superchargers, right? Superchargers can range uh, in different areas, different sets. Um, they're, of course, the really big ones like Kettleman City that's featured in this uh, picture here that have a lounge and so forth. Other ones um, might be a little bit smaller, um, but they're all conveniently located. At every one that I've been to, there's always been something nearby to go and get something to eat. Um, but be aware of where you are are as far as charging, you will get a push notification to your phone when charging is near completion. You don't want to be plugged in past your uh, car being charged because um, you may get idle fees for, uh, for being there. Oh, and then destination charging. So they've shown this on uh, on the maps uh, briefly. There is a charge icon on the maps uh, and superchargers on, on your mapping system in the car will show up as a red uh, supercharging icon. However, you'll get other icons that show up when you hit the charging button that just show up as like a gray dot with a letter on it. Those are destination chargers. And what destination chargers are, are they're basically a high powered wall charger that's plugged in the same kind that you would have uh, installed, you could have in installed at your house. These are businesses that have installed them uh, for the use of their customers. So you'll find hotels have them. If you're planning a trip somewhere, check the hotel. They may have these destination chargers there and it just makes it really convenient. It is going to be a faster charging, um, uh, but it's, it's going to be at the, ch at the cost of the hotel or the place of business.
So definitely handy and convenient. So we're gonna wrap up with software updates and additional resources. There's a lot more that you'll learn about your Tesla as you spend time with it. In fact, the learning never ends. Your car gets better with time as new and improved features are added via over-the-air software updates. To ensure that you get these updates, it's best for your car to be connected to Wi-Fi whenever it can be. To join a Wi-Fi network, tap the connectivity icon on the status bar, select the desired network, and join as you would with any other device. Your car will now automatically connect to this network whenever it's within range. When a software update is ready to install, a clock icon will appear on the status bar. Tap this icon to schedule installation. Your car isn't drivable while an update is installing, so it's often best to schedule it for while you're sleeping. When you wake up, you'll step into an even better and more capable Tesla, and you'll be greeted with release notes that walk you through what's new. You can always access the release notes from your most recent update in the Software tab within the Controls menu. Tap the Tesla T at the top of the screen. Here, you'll find the phone number for Tesla Roadside Assistance. You can simply tap it to call. It's a good idea to save this number in your phone. You can also request roadside assistance and view status updates on the Tesla app. We're here for you 24 seven if you're ever in need while out on the road. If you'd like to schedule a service appointment, you can do so right from the app as well. As a reminder, you can purchase upgrades for your car within the app too. Even more upgrades and accessories can be found on our website at shop.tesla.com. These and other instructional videos are available on your car's touchscreen whenever you'd like to brush up on your knowledge. Pull up the app launcher, select Entertainment, Theater, and then Tesla Tutorials. The detailed information in the owner's manual is always here on the touchscreen as well. It's even accessible with a voice command. Display Owner's Manual. The best way to learn is to start driving. Your Tesla is designed to be the safest, most convenient, and most fun car you've ever driven. Enjoy it. And thanks for accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. Absolutely. So I can't stress that more is that the amount of knowledge that there is, is a lot and it's never ending as far as learning. But the point is, is for that not to be intimidating. And that's kind of one of the main purposes of this, uh, you know, this presentation here is to get that core foundation, that baseline, get you kind of interested in understanding of what and how to operate your car at its base level. And then now as you get out there and start to learn more, you'll start to pick up and you'll start to play with more. I wanted to highlight additional resources here. There's of course, Tesla support um, that you can access to learn more. Um, there's plenty of Tesla forums, forums.tesla.com where users like you and I are on there um, and contributing. And then there's of course, owners clubs like us at the Tesla owners of Silicon Valley that are here that we also have a lot of resources. We have events. Of course, you know, this year has been a special one, but um, this year we've had a lot of virtual events um, where we've talked and communicated a lot and then usually in person as well. Um, and hopefully we'll get back in, in, in 2021, but we do have uh, on our website, uh, Tesla Model 3 and Y owner's guide um, that I myself created and it's on there. And so that's also very helpful for going through a lot of what was covered here and a little bit more. Um, and uh, but that's pretty much it from the uh, from the new orientation of uh, of the vehicles. Again, thank you guys so much for for joining us. Hopefully, we were able to answer most of your questions.